Welcome to another Wednesday night. I'm gonna pull the stream up here on my phone. <laughs> Let I'll Steph do that. Hope you all had a great week. Uh, I know last week we left off with a challenge to do soap, which was uh, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And I challenged you every day of the month, whether it was 26, 27, 28, to do that chapter in Proverbs. And then you would read the scripture, you'd observe what you saw in that scripture, you would apply that scripture to your life, and then you would pray that God would give you the wisdom, the strength um, to do what you applied to your life or what you learned in that proverb. So I hope you did it once, twice, maybe you did it every day. This week, uh, I just encourage you to continue to grow your relationship with Christ every single day by diving into His Word, talking to Him daily, because that's so important. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, Palm Sunday, which I know today is Wednesday. There's not Palm Wednesday, but since this is when we meet, this weekend, this Sunday service is known as Palm Sunday. So we're going to be touching on that. It's when Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and that was going to be the week that he ended up being crucified. And so we're going to look at just a couple aspects of this story and see how our lives can be affected and how we can change based on some things that we read. Uh, the first thing we'll be looking at is how did the crowd respond to Jesus and looking at their response maybe we can learn some things how we can respond to Jesus, how we can act toward Jesus as well. We're also going to look at the question of why were there so many people in Jerusalem when Jesus rode in on a donkey. We're going to learn about the very beginning of how Passover became Passover way back in the Old Testament and then we're gonna end with the challenge to do what God is calling you to do Jesus when he entered into Jerusalem knew that at the end of that week his life he was going to be crucified and yet he decided to obey God follow through with what um, what God wanted him to do even if it was very challenging I'm sure very difficult for him to do that um, any Thoughts on your part before we jump into scripture? Uh, no, we can jump right on in. All right, so we're going to read our first verse, which is Mark chapter 11, verses 7 through 10. Steph's going to read all of our scriptures this evening and uh, jump in with some thoughts as well. All right, it's uh, Mark 11, 7 through 10. Um, then they brought the coal to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Jesus, had wa Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shout shouting, praise God, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessing on the kingdom of our ancestor David, praise to God in the highest heaven. Awesome. So imagine this scenario. Jesus is riding on a donkey. He's coming into Jerusalem and you have this massive these crowds of people that are everywhere around that are welcoming him welcoming him into Jerusalem so the first question is why was Jesus greeted by so many people why were there so many there and we're gonna first look at people were there first of all honoring him because they wanted to honor Jesus they wanted to praise Jesus they wanted to glorify him uh, recently he had just risen Lazarus from the dead they had seen him do miracles they had heard other people talk about the miracles he had performed and all the incredible things that Jesus had been doing in the area. Healing of the blind, the lame, the mute, the deaf, like I said, raising people from the dead, all of these incredible works. And so they wanted to honor Jesus. Mm -hmm. I also think that they, um, Jesus made himself known to the people who were around him and he didn't just kind of hide and talk to the ones he was comfortable with. He made it known that he was the son of God and that he could do miraculous things and that he had amazing power um, through Jesus. And I think that's something too we can take away is do people know that you know Jesus and that you have the power Jesus holds, um, you know, that God has for us or are you just quiet about it or you just tell certain people or in certain situations and um, yeah, Jesus made himself known who he was and the power that he had and in whose name he came. Yeah. And one way they honored Jesus, they, it says that they laid uh, branches down, they cut in the field, palm branches, they laid, they took their garments and laid them on the ground in front of Jesus. And I'm just picturing, I'm sure that it's dirty, you got dirt everywhere, and yet they're laying their clothes down just so when Jesus enters, he's got like this, a cleaner path to enter into Jerusalem on. And you're like, well, it's just putting their clothing down. And yeah, that's what they had. They're like, how can I honor Jesus with what I have? They're like, you know what? I have this garment. I can lay down. 
I'm gonna do that. I got this palm branch I cut, I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna do anything I can right now so I can honor and glorify Jesus as he comes in. And as I think about that, I ask the question that what are, what are we willing to sacrifice or give up in our lives to honor Jesus? Maybe that means sacrificing some time, Maybe it means sacrificing some money, sacrificing even your talents to honor, to bless, to be there for someone else, whatever it may be. And this is, what are, what are you willing to give to Jesus? When he needs your time, when he needs your money, when he needs your talents, are you going to be willing to obey him and trust him and use the things that God's given you to bless other people and to uh, overall bring glory back to God? And it also says they were honoring him, but they were also there. It says they were praising Jesus. They were all shouting. They were yelling praise to Jesus as he was walking in. Um, we're going to read Psalm chapter 150, uh, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it says, let everything that has breath. I have breath, oftentimes very bad breath. You got <laughs> breath. You all have breath. That's, you're watching this right now, so I know you're breathing. <laughs> I do have bad breath sometimes, but we all have breath. And it says, let everyone that has breath praise the Lord. So if you're breathing, that's good. We didn't even plan that. That was good. If you have breath, praise the Lord. And so what does it mean to praise? Well, praise is an expression of approval. Some synonyms of praise are to glorify, exalt, and to honor. And so when we're praising Jesus, we can do that with our actions, laying down our garments. We can... Uh, with our words, we can praise Jesus. We can praise Him, exalt Him, honor, glorify Him. And so that's a couple of reasons why people wanted. They wanted to see Jesus. They wanted to praise Jesus. They wanted to honor Jesus. Um, I just thought of when they were laying down their jackets um, and just the word phrase laying down. Sometimes there are things that God asks us to lay down. And for them, they're like, this is my jacket. Like, this is what's going to keep me warm. This is what's going to, like, provide me something to wear. It's my cute one. Or, you know, maybe that was my cute jacket they laid down, whatever it is. Sometimes God asks us to lay down things. And we think, no, God, I need this. This is for me. Like, you provided me a job that I could get this jacket or whatever it is. But... God's asking you, lay it down and I have something better for you. Lay it down and I have I have my son who's going to come in here and he's going to um he, he's going to be the savior for you and everybody else on the planet. Like you know, when we see it from that perspective, we go, "Oh wow, well of course I'm going to lay it down." But sometimes there are things in our lives that God ask, is asking us to lay down and we're like, "Yeah, but I don't really know." Um I think we all need to strive to to um trust God enough and to, to know who he is enough to trust that he's going to um, have something better when we lay down the things that he's asking us to lay down. Yeah, that's good. And we also look at our next part. People were gathered in Jerusalem. The amount of people answering why were they there, it was because of uh, the Passover. So we're going to go way back into the Old Testament in the second book of the Bible, Exodus. We're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 12. And so at this time, the Israelites, they were slaves in the land of Egypt. And a guy named Moses was trying to get Pharaoh to oftentimes let his people go. If you've ever seen the movie, what is it? Uh, um, oh, no. I don't even remember. There's a, a cartoon you may have seen. Uh, Prince of Egypt, Prince I think. Of Egypt, Prince of Egypt, Egypt. there it is. See, Prince of Egypt <laughs> was like, let, let my people go, he keeps saying throughout the movie. And so, but Pharaoh uh, did not want to let the Israelites go. Um, he was worried that they, if they ever got into battle, if they were not under their control, that they would come and overpower them. Um, so Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. So God was sending different plagues and difficulties on the land of Egypt. So it was plague one. We're not going to go over all the plagues. That would, for another time. But overall, there were 10 plagues, 10 difficulties that were sent on to the land of Egypt. And we're going to look at the 10th and the last thing that happened to the land. And so what was this disaster that occurred? We're going to look in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. It says, On that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. And we're going to jump down to verses 21 now after that. So this was going to happen. All the firstborn sons, firstborn male animals were going to die. And you might think, well, what about the Israelites? What about the people that uh, God's we're trying to... serving God who love God. That are loving mm -hmm. God. Well, we're going to read in verses 21 through 23 that God had a plan to protect those people. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb or a young goat for each 
of your families and slaughter the Passover animals. Drain the blood into a basin and take a bundle of hypos, some branches, <laughs> and dip it into the blood. Brush the branches across the top and the sides of the door frame of your house and no one may go out through the door until morning for the lord will pass through the land and strike down the egyptians but when he sees the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame the lord will pass over your home he will not permit death uh his death angel to enter your house and strike you down so we see that god's plan to protect the israelites was they would uh, slaughter an animal they would put the door on or the, put the, the blood. blood on their door frame and when the, the death angel would come through uh, they would be safe they would see the blood and they would not harm anyone inside or the firstborn mm -hmm. son inside of that house and so later on in Exodus we see that this actually happened just like God said it would like it always does and the firstborn sons of the Egyptians died Pharaoh's son died there was wailing there was crying I mean this was it's a lot of deaths that just happened and so Moses went back let my people go and Pharaoh finally told Moses they're like get out of here they gave Moses everything they needed anything that they wanted they're like we don't want you here anymore we're worried if you guys stay here we're all gonna die so they're like you need to just leave Egypt and get out of here um, so going to verse 14 in Exodus chapter 12 here's what it says Sorry, this is a day to remember. Each year, from generation to generation, you must celebrate it as a special festival of the Lord. To the Lord, excuse me. So the reason that everyone was in Jerusalem during this time, going back to our main scripture, say hi. We gotta ooh, jump on here. Angelia is watching. Welcome, James. Hey, how you doing, James? <laughs> Good to see you in here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so the reason we see people celebrate the Passover here is because of the protection and the deliverance that God brought them out of Egypt. And so that's why there was such large crowds when Jesus uh, came in to Jerusalem at that time. And so jumping into our next point, like I said earlier, Jesus knew what was gonna happen to him. He wasn't unaware that he was going to suffer and that he was going to die, and yet he was willing. He's like, I'm still gonna go, I'm still going to trust God I'm still going to obey and do it even though this is very very difficult because he knew that that was his mission when he came to earth that's what he came to do is to change lives to impact lives and to die for you and for me and so just as Jesus came into Jerusalem to fulfill what God wanted him to do we can ask ourselves what is God calling me to do what does God desire of me how does he want me to live what does he want me to do so we're just going to read a few different verses here, uh, three of them. Uh, go ahead, Steph. Um, Acts 1.8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then Mark 16.15, it says, And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Matthew 28.15. 19 to 20 it says therefore go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit teaching these new disciples to obey all the commands i have given you and be sure of this i am always with you even to the ends of the age absolutely those are some great verses and first and foremost god wants each and every one of us to give our lives over to him and then out of our commitment to him he wants obedience to him like it like it says I think it was in Matthew chapter 28 teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and so through our obedience to Christ doesn't mean we're free of challenges we look at the life of Jesus through the New Testament he went through a lot of challenges he lived a perfect life and yet people ridiculed him he had to die on a cross which we're gonna uh, talk about more next Wednesday and so just because we're obedient to Christ and have a relationship with God doesn't mean we're free of those challenges but the good news is we may go through challenges but having God on our side can bring us so much peace comfort and strength so we're gonna read in uh, the book of John and James about what happens and what uh, some positives when trials and troubles come into our life um, John 16 33 says I have told you all this so that you may have peace with me here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows but take heart because I have overcome the world 
James 1, 2 through 3. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Absolutely. And so we, we don't need to be afraid to stand up for what we believe in. We don't have to be worried about what might happen. Well, what about this? What about that? What if, what if, what if? We ask all these what if questions. Jesus, we see, he was willing to go all the way to the cross. He was willing to die for you and for me. And so when we have a relationship with God and when we trust that he has a plan for our lives and we trust in that plan for our lives, our obedience may take us to places that we wouldn't necessarily want to go to, but those temporary troubles, those temporary challenges that we may face that may get thrown our way are nothing in comparison with what God has planned for us in eternity. And I, I really like um, in the verse where it says, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when you have troubles um, that come your way, it doesn't say if something bad happens, maybe it's kind of going to be hard. Maybe sometimes, are, you know, there's going to be stuff, junk that comes. It says when troubles of any kind come your way. And I think one, that's a testament of God knowing real life. Sometimes I feel like we get this image of like, well, God's in heaven and it's all perfect and everything. And he doesn't really understand how I feel. He doesn't know what I'm going through. He does know because one, he was a human on earth. And two, it says um, that he, he, he knows that we're going to face hard times. And that's, that's not because he's a horrible God and lets us go through all hard times. No, like that's Sin, sin happened, Adam and Eve had the choice and sin happened and that's in the world and that's just how life is now and we could go way deep into that but we're not going to do that today but I think it um, uh, when he says when the troubles come consider it a joy because um, it's an opportunity for your um you to grow. You, I think of like a muscle, like if I, which I don't have tons, I guess, but if I wanted to grow muscles, I would have to work out and I would have to flex my muscles and continue to work them and work them. And when I, when I do that, I'm just picturing myself doing this because it's a perfect example. And if you've seen me do it or would have seen me do it, it'd be a perfect example because when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it hurts after like three with an eight pound weight. And I'm like, okay, but if I want to grow my this muscle <laughs> um I have to continue to do it even though it's uncomfortable and even though it hurts because and I <laughs> should continue to do that because I know that by me continuing to go through something that's kind of difficult and honestly uncomfortable and painful at times I know that I'm going to produce something that will help me in the future and my muscles will help me lift things and help me whatever be healthy and all the things that strong muscles can give you benefits of but it's just like it's that with the spiritual muscle as well when we go through hard times it allows us to kind of flex that and grow a deeper faith if everything was easy and everything went perfect and I became a Christian so now my life is whatever one we'd have nothing to look forward to in heaven uh, more importantly too we would have no reason to need God because when hard things come up we realize oh I really do need God even on easy days we should need God you know we do need God but when we have hard times and when we're going through stuff, that's the moments where we're like, God, I need you so much. And we have an opportunity to take a couple steps closer to God and lean into him a little bit more. And um, by leaning into him more, you develop a deeper relationship uh, with him and a, and a deeper trust and a deeper faith with him, within him. Um, so, yeah, he knows. <laughs> yeah. It's all opportunity. Sorry, it's all opportunity, and it's all your perspective. You can choose to look at it as, oh, all, everything stinks and do 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 do, or you can look at it as, okay, God, I have an opportunity where I can choose to complain, or I have an opportunity to get closer to you, and I'm gonna choose to get closer to you because I love you and I want to know you, and I can't make it without you. So, yeah. now I'm done. <laughs> kind of going off that is when Jesus is a part of your life, which I hope he is. I hope you have committed your life to him. You're living for him. We should continue to praise Him, continue to honor Him in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get into a, a tough situation, especially right now. You've got to stay at home. You, you've got to do school from online. You can't see your friends. You have no sports. All these challenges. And even through all of this, we should continue going back to Christ. Thank Him for the things that He does give us. Thank Him that we can do school online. Thank Him for your help. Um, yeah, and even, I mean, even the fact that we're able to talk with you guys right now on social media, like, 
think back not too long ago, they didn't have things like this. So had something like this happen then, they would have no communication with anybody and it would literally be only you and your family or whoever that you lived with. And um, yeah, we're so, we're so blessed. And whenever you start feeling down and kind of like, oh man, everything's kind of overwhelming and everything kind of is, is less than um, <laughs> what I would like it to be, start literally counting your blessings from the most basic of things. I had lunch today and I feel full. Like that's a blessing because there are people, you know, in the world who don't have that. I have a roof over my head. I have family who loves me. I have friends who are there for me, even if I don't get to see them as much as I'd like right now. This will be done eventually, you know, like this will not last forever. And, um, you know, so many things. When we shift our perspectives on the blessings instead of the um, bad stuff, then uh, it it literally changes everything. It takes it from, oh, everything, woe is me, this is horrible, blah, 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 to, um, to wow, I mean, yeah, this is hard, but I ha but look at all the things that I do have. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to the verse, it says that we will be his witnesses. And so what does that look like? You're like, I really can't leave my house. I can't go be a witness. Well, I know a lot of you still have friends. You can text, you can call, you have social media. So I, I know, I'm bad at social media. I don't post things. <laughs> I probably could. I probably should. <laughs> I'm bad at that. But and so I'm challenging myself as well to to post something encouraging. Uh, call a friend. Facetime a friend. Uh, post something on your Instagram story. Something on Facebook, like a, a verse that you read in Proverbs during one of your soap devotionals. <laughs> Whatever it may be, we can still be God's witness with the way we act. We can stay positive. We can stay stay joyful. We can stay committed to Christ even during this. And people will look to you and be like, I don't understand how you can be like that in this kind of time. We can still be God's witness, even if we can't physically be around people. And so we have a chance to grow closer to God every single day. But that choice is up to you, whether you take opportunities in the morning, for lunch, in the afternoon, whenever it may be. It's, it's your choice to take those opportunities to get closer to Christ. And even moment by moment, I know it's good, it's so good to take time and like, okay, this is my devotional time, or this is my read my Bible time, or this is my jot down my prayers time, but um, also taking time in the moments where I'm feeling so frustrated and overwhelmed right now because of whatever. Um, Lord, please help me and be with me. I, I, I need you to be able to get through this, otherwise this is not gonna be good, you know? Um, so having a balance of continuing through the moments and taking the specific set out time um, for God. And we have lots of time right now for God because we are at home right now, so. Yeah, <laughs> sure do. And so will you continue trusting God through the time of this virus? Will you continue glorifying him through times of uncertainty? I know some of us have questions, what's gonna happen? How long is it gonna go on for? When can I see my friends again? I know I'm like, when's baseball gonna come back? <laughs> when's basketball, like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> my priorities. <laughs> and, but through all of this, through the confusion, through the chaos, through the stuff that's never happened before, the one thing that stays the same is God. Like mm -hmm. it says, he was the same before yeah. the virus started, he's the same right now while the virus is going on, and he's gonna be the same after the virus is gone. So your choice, my choice, I hope all of our choices is to continue trusting the one person, the, the one thing that's gonna stay the same, that's gonna stay consistent, that will always be able to give us strength, that'll always be able to give us, maybe not the right answers how to deal with the coronavirus, but the right answers to deal with how we're feeling, what mm -hmm. to do, how to act. Our response our, to our it. Our response to the coronavirus, exactly. And so going back, like, how did we get here? We're talking about Palm Sunday. Uh, well, the, our third point was the fact that Jesus knew what he was walking into. He, he knew that he was going to die. And yet Jesus continually throughout the New Testament read, he always continued to walk in obedience, no matter how challenging the situation was, no matter what he was walking through, no matter what people told him he could or could not do, mm -hmm. he continued to walk faithfully and in obedience. And so I challenge you to walk in obedience starting tonight, tomorrow, uh, this whole week. Start a pattern of obedience in your walk with Christ. Um, any last thoughts? No, I think it's 
it's good and it's it's an exciting time and I encourage you guys to some of the verses that we read here and about all the things that happened read through those things and figure it out for yourself and I I always want people to know whether it's us who's you're hearing speak or somebody else another pastor or speaker or somebody make sure and find out for yourself um, you can listen to what we say and we do our best to base everything out of the word and make it as true and biblical as possible but how you can always know the truth is going to God's word for yourself and then you can truly know okay you know the one number one this is true and two god may speak to you something specific that he didn't speak to us or that we didn't share with you tonight and that maybe he has something just for you and him to talk about or to um you know work through or, or um discover new so yeah do that and have some time with god we have lots of time throughout our day especially now we always do but especially now and um it's our choice what we're gonna do with it are we gonna take extra time with god and and deepen our relationship with him or are we gonna hang out on the couch and watch netflix <laughs> all day long <laughs> not that watching netflix is bad because we're about to talk about how we're about to go watch netflix in like 20 minutes but um but you know what i'm trying to say yeah. that's it <laughs> we'll close some prayer and then share sure. your thoughts yes i do Oh, God, thank you so much that we're able to gather this way. And I thank you so much for um, the people who are watching and for the people who are going to watch in the future. And even those um, who are not watching, Lord, I pray that you will just bless everybody and um, continue to um, stir in our hearts, Lord, in the moments when you have something to say to us, Lord. And let us be able to um, hear your voice. I thank you that so many all those years ago lord that you um you, you sent your only son for us and that um he was who he was and that you are and um who you are and um i just thank you so much and i i thank you for the story of the cross that's um coming next week lord that um really that you love us enough to do everything that you've done for us so uh lord i thank you so much and i pray that you'll um will be aware that you are always with us throughout your, our week we love you and amen Awesome. awesome. Uh, we have something fun going on tonight and some nights coming up. Uh, we're doing a, a party on Netflix. So I'm going to let mm -hmm. Steph explain that to you. So we are um, having, like he said, a party on Netflix. And if you're like, okay, Stephanie, what's a party on Netflix? It's basically where um, I'll explain the directions on how to do it. But we can all watch the same movie on Netflix at the same time. And there's like a little chat bar room thing, chat room whatever you call it in a bar on the side Discussion of the screen section sure and you can we can talk throughout it so it's like we're all hanging out watching a movie but we can't all be hanging out watching a movie so basically and oh and tonight we're gonna be in like what time is it right now um let's say at seven um 720 we're gonna um we're gonna press play so it'll give you some time to get cozy and um download the whatever you need to that i'm gonna explain in a second um tonight we're gonna watch spy kids one we're throwing it back a little bit and then on friday night at eight o'clock p.m we're gonna be watching spy kids three because netflix is lame it doesn't have spy kids two so we're gonna go to spy kids three and then on sunday um at 8 p.m we're gonna watch spy kids four which i didn't know there was a spy kids four so it's gonna be a first time <laughs> viewing for me um so how you do that is you go to um I, all the instructions are on our instagram and facebook in the post they're all red backgrounds white letters um it's the third picture so if you guys are like you're going too fast i don't know what she said go ahead and look there and you can do it at your own pace but you're gonna go to netflixparty.com on your laptop it has to be a laptop or a desktop it has to be a computer of sorts um and then you have to be using a chrome browser Browser. If you don't have Google Chrome, just go Google Google Chrome and it literally just downloads it. It's another web browser, but it only works on there. And then you're going to go to um, uh, type in Netflix Party on Chrome and then it says install. And it just adds a little tiny um, button on the top of your screen, on your top left right side of the screen and it says um np little red letters so it'll put it there and then you're going to go to our instagram story or uh, no, sorry, sorry, instagram bio or our facebook and you're going to click the link there that's going to take you right to the movie and um then you just click the little np that little button that we just downloaded click it and then we're going to go right to it it sounds really complicated but it's really not and they give you step-by-step -step instructions as you're going on the website so no worries and then we're just going to hang out and watch spy kids and eat whatever snacks you have or don't have at home so <laughs> that's great so we'll see you all in about 20 ish minutes
Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of steps. Go on to our Facebook, uh, LegacyYouth.TheSprings. On Facebook, you can find all the directions mm -hmm. there. If you're still confused, shoot me a text. Uh, yeah, call us. <laughs> call us. We'll figure we it out. Help you. It's Hope really you're... not as complicated as it may sound. No, it's not. <laughs> but... And continue to do soap. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, so Today's scripture, the op op observation, <laughs> application, prayer. Today is April, April 1st. 1st. April Fool's. April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke that we're watching Netflix. We really are. Still got time. Read Proverbs chapter 1 tonight. Do, do uh, S-O-A-P. Scripture observation. Application <laughs> prayer. There we go. That's for you. You're never going to forget it now. Um, yeah, for tomorrow's Proverbs chapter 2, I encourage you, grow your relationship with Christ. Get closer to Him and dive into the Word. Uh, pray. Thank you for everyone, whether you were 10 years old or 87 years old, uh, joining us tonight. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Glad to have you here. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye. Bye.